Welcome to Indulge and Beyond. In this video, we will show you beautiful beaches of St. John. Let's start with Maho Bay Beach. It's voted as visitors' favorite beach. From its iconic coconut palm fringe white sand beach, light surf, shallow entry and ease of access, Maho deserves its fame. You can rent stuff and then you can eat. We just had our food. You can come here and chill out. Nice chilling area. Ooh, look at that. This is Maho. Ah, look at this turtle. So it's a nice place to hang out. There is a small parking lot across the east end of the beach. You'll see plenty of roadside parking as well. You can visit this Mahu Cross Road across the street for food and shopping and Reef to Peak for beach rentals. You can sit and eat. Good. The narrow sandy beach has plenty of sand and shade. The sandy bottom extends about 20 yards, making it a wonderful beach to wade, swim, float, hey, uh, and you hang can find out. turtles here when you're snorkeling. Yeah, you have to go a little further inside to see turtles. Entry is free to visit Maho Bay Beach. What we are seeing is that parking is a big challenge. If you are lucky, you'll find parking. So if any beach you want to stay and spend your day, it's good to come early in the morning and get a good parking. Here you can see the mangroves on this side, lots of mangroves. This is a bay. This is, we are heading towards Francis Bay. So these are lots of mangroves on this side. Again, parking, no parking. Lucky you will get a, you will get a parking in the front of the, front of the lot. Now we are lucky here. You get a parking in Francis the Francis Bay Beach doesn't get the crowds that some of the other beaches get. A long white sand beach offers plenty of space with ample shades. Snorkeling is good on both sides of the bay, with the eastern side offering slightly more diversity. On the west side, you'll find rocks extending from the shoreline with a mix of hard and soft corals. The center of the bay is mostly sea grass beds and home to turtles. This is at the Francis Bay and you'll find some ruins here as well. We are heading towards Annaberg. So sugar plantation. Sugar plantation. So back 203 in this bag, they just bring sugar cane plantation here. So that's where the ruins are for. So we are here at Sugar Bay plantation Anaborg sugar bay plantation Anaborg sugar plantation so that's the parking they have quite few good spots so you might be lucky Kaste, um, sugar cane Anaborg plantation started operations during the 18th century and eventually became the largest sugar producing state on St. John. A stroll through Anabar takes roughly an hour. A 40 foot high windmill constructed with sails to direct the wind was state of the art at the time of its completion in 1805. It rained. Yes. That's how they were done. That's how the sugar Ah, makes sense. The plantation was one of the largest in operation in St. John during the late 1700s and produced 100,000 tons of sugar a year. Front of us is the workers' quarter. Barely remains now. However, archaeologists have uncovered a wealth of artifacts here. 
there were more than 16 buildings in this area. As you walk through the ruins, you will notice the steep hills behind the factory. This entire hillside was planted in sugarcane. The wind-powered blades turn the rollers that crush the sugarcane. The sugarcane had to be juiced within 24 hours of being harvested to prevent spoilage. After the cane stalks were crushed, the juice ran from the crushers down into the boiling room through wooden troughs. The juice then went into the first of five iron pots where it was boiled. The fire was made in a fire pit and fueled from the outside of the sugar factory walls. The thickened juice was then ladled into the neighboring pot and boiled again to just the right consistency and then ladled into the succeeding pot. This was done pot after pot until a brown sugar called Moscovado was produced. The workers in the boiling room had to be highly skilled. A mistake in timing would end up in the production of molasses, which was not nearly as valuable as sugar. The view from Annaborg is spectacular. You can see down into Leinster Bay, the Narrows, the Sir Francis Drake Channel, several of the British Virgin Islands, and Forstead, the mountain valleys of St. John. We are going down from the plantation to the parking lot. You can sure use the stairs. So when you are in uh, St. John, you can take uh, two taxi, which they took like 10 to 15 people, and that takes like two hours, two and a half hour tour. So now, when you land at St. John's Cruise Bay from there, right? Yes. You can take the taxi from you the ferry. You can take a taxi if you don't have a car with you. So that will pro probably for two, two and a half hours will take $35 per person. Now, if you want to go to a certain beach, like a Tark Bay beach, they may co cost you nine to ten dollars per person they will go and drop you and then you have to give them a call and then they'll come back and pick you up that time so that's another option you can choose if you don't have the car with you so these are the taxis uh, we have been talking about where you can rent them here's our car so there have been lots of ruins around from plantation but from our experience, Annaberg sugar plantation was the best, like best remains in sense of lots of uh, buildings, their process, they describe it very well. So if you're interested to look at the sugar plantation ruins, for sure visit Annaberg. Thank you for watching Indulge and Beyond. Please do like, share and subscribe our channel. We always like to hear from you. See you in our next video. Till then, goodbye.